Hello everyone. So in this video, we are talking about cloud landing role. Now, first let's talk about what is cloud landing role. Okay. So to make you understand what cloud landing role is, I'll take a layman's example. Let's say that you have bought a new mobile phone. Now, before you can start using your new mobile phone, you are, there are certain uh, setup which you will do. Okay. It's like you will set up some user ID and password, you will set up fingerprint, you will set up some pin or pattern based uh, login mechanism, then you will insert your SIM card. Uh, okay. Then after that, uh, once your SIM card is uh, inserted, you would probably uh, set up the internet. Okay. Using your SIM card, uh, you will set up your Wi Fi password. Okay. So, what I mean to say over here is there are a number of tasks which you do before you start using your phone. You start using your application or installing applications in your mobile phone. In the same way, whenever you uh, you or your organization is trying to adopt cloud, okay, you won't just create a cloud account, for example, an AWS account or an Azure account or a GCP account and start creating resources. Okay, you need to set, meet certain prerequisites, you need to follow certain prerequisites, okay. And that list of prerequisite which you follow before you start deploying your workload on your cloud account, okay, is known as landing board. Okay, so it is like preparing your cloud provider, okay, or your cloud account with all the security controls or access controls before you start using or deploying workloads, virtual machines, Kubernetes, whatever workload you want to deploy. Okay, that is what cloud landing board does. Okay, so it lets you predefine and secure a multi-account, multi-project environment. Okay, then it helps you onboard different workloads and teams managing those workloads in an easier way or in an automated way. It lets you create workload division across multiple accounts and projects for security and isolation. Okay, like creating appropriate VPCs, uh, enforcing organization policy, the compliance policies. Mm -hmm setting up the firewall rules, okay? And it also lets you do centralized management of networking, monitoring, logging, okay? And security controls. So this is what cloud landing zone is, okay? So it's a, basically a checklist before you, before you start using your cloud services, it's a checklist which you will follow to set up your cloud account, okay? So what benefit does it provide? So it provides you an all security, okay? So you will have a standard set of security policies applied before, even before you start using the services. Okay. So even if someone creates a virtual machine, those security policies would be applied and there are less, lesser chances of your account being getting compromised or services getting compromised. Okay. Then it basically helps you automate onboarding, onboarding of what onboarding of new projects or new accounts in your cloud organization. Okay. By using automation tools like Terraform or cloud formation. Then it lets you set up a multi-account organization. So when you talk about larger organization, or even if you talk about a mid-scale organization, it's not that they will just have one single project which is going on. They might have multiple projects. Okay. So instead of doing all those multiple projects in one single account, okay, or in, inside one single uh, project itself, okay. Uh, why shouldn't I create a multi-account environment? Okay, so that is a proper segregation of resources. It lets you create a multi-account organization or multi-project organization. It lets you improve your compliance. So you can uh, basically put some security control or compliance control on your on your resources. Okay, like for example, whenever a new cloud account is onboarded, it shouldn't have any default network or it shouldn't you shouldn't be allowed to create a virtual machine with public IP address. So it lets you import certain compliance of government rules. Okay. It lets you do workload isolations by creating proper business units or proper folders within your cloud account. Okay. Or creating multiple cloud accounts if you're coming from in an AWS world. Okay. So that you can isolate isolate your workload. And it also encourages team collaboration. Okay. So uh there should be different teams such as security team, networking team, and appropriate groups should be created for them and necessary permission should be allocated for them before they start using those cloud services. Okay. Then centralize uh management of uh various things such as networking, logging monitoring, security, 
it lets you do that. And finally, it also lets you do this mitigation. So instead of just randomly creating resources, you will follow certain best practices so that your cloud account is ready to deploy those resources. So it mitigates risk. Now, what are the main components which basically provide you these benefits or lets you implement these things so that you get benefit? What are those main components? The first main component is identity management. So identity management basically entails that you will have one centralized identity such as Azure Active Directory or an LDAP or, right, or an on-premises Active Directory where all your users' identities will be created. Okay. And then they might be synchronized to your cloud account. For example, if you're using AWS, then you might synchronize it with AWS identity and access management service so that you don't need to recreate those users. Okay, so you will have one single source of truth for your user's identity. Okay, then it lets you create certain groups or you should create certain groups and add users to those groups. Okay, such as uh, a networking admin or a security admin or a monitoring admin okay so that uh, a security person gets only the permission which he requires to do his job then next it also lets you define the access control like which user or which group should have what access okay for example if you talk about a network admin the network admin should get only permissions to uh, network related services such as VPC, VPNs, load balancers. Okay. So it lets you, uh, give, it basically gives you certain best practices that which users or groups should have what level of permissions. Okay. Then it lets you set resource hierarchy. So, as I said, if you talk about large enterprises, they won't create resources in one single account. Okay. Or one single project. So, depending on which cloud you're using, you can use the word project and account interchangeably. You will have multiple projects or you will have multiple accounts okay and these accounts and projects should be organized okay in a proper hierarchical manner for example it could be uh, organizing or grouping your cloud accounts into prod and non-prod so you will have 10 production accounts 10 non-production accounts in a single organization so that is your resource hierarchy okay now it could be as simple as uh, creating resource hierarchy based on environment or it could be uh, as complicated as creating resource hierarchy based on business unit or different different teams. Then setting up networking. Okay, so when I say networking, you don't have one single network again, you might have multiple network and you would like to enforce same network control on all the networks which you're creating. So uh, whenever you talk about setting up landing on one of the things which we implement would be creating a networking architecture, which basically enforces the same networking uh, guardrails, okay, across all the different networks created for different, different projects or different different accounts. One of the widely used architecture for networking could be an hub and Spock architecture where you will have one hub VPC okay, and you might have multiple Spock VPCs, which are, uh, which might be in different, different projects or different, different accounts. Okay, and they would be connected or peered to an Hub VPC, okay, and a Hub VPC might have a third-party firewall which would scan all the traffic which is coming inside your uh, cloud working. Okay, so that is what networking lets you set up. Next is security control. So in security control, you basically enforce uh, governance policy. So if you are coming from an AWS world, you might enforce AWS Config Service. Okay, based on uh, it may be uh, based on some regulatory compliance such as PCI DSS. So you will enforce those compliance, okay, on your account. So for example, whenever a S3 bucket is created, it shouldn't be public, okay. This is the uh, control security security control which I want to enforce. So every cloud provider has a service which lets you enforce the security control. Apart from that, uh, you will enable security services, which basically lets you do security portion analysis. So if you're coming from an Azure world, you might enable service like Microsoft Defender, okay, which lets you do security portion analysis. Okay. So that is something which you will enable in your account when you're setting up landing zone. Okay. So that before even your workload is created, they have the secure necessary security guardrails in place. Then you will set up monitoring and logging. 
Okay, so again, when I say monitoring and logging, it would be like more centralized monitoring and logging. So uh, users don't need to go to different, different projects or different, different accounts to, to get the logs. There would be one centralized place where all the logs would be saved. Now it could be a cloud-based logging and monitoring tool or it could be a third-party logging and monitoring tool, depending upon your uh, strategy. But the idea over here is to centrally capture the logs and metrics in one centralized place okay from different different cloud accounts okay and finally comes the automation piece so automation piece basically entails that you won't do all these things in a manual way you will have some automation or infrastructure support tools such as terraform which will help you to set up all these things okay and whenever they want to whenever you want to add uh, new projects or new accounts to your uh, landing zone, it lets you automate creation of this new account and also make sure that it has proper networking, proper security, proper monitoring, logging, proper access control. All the uh, cloud uh, landing zone checklist all right, followed before the data account is being used. Okay, so these are the different components of your landing zone. And again, repeating landing zone is nothing but it's like preparing your cloud account before you can start using it. It is very same as you buy a new mobile phone and before you start using it, you do certain prereq, all right? So that your mobile phone is ready to be used, all right? So this was it for this video. I hope you like it. Thank you for watching.